The following podcast is a W2M Network original production. Visit W2Mnet.com for all of our other great podcasts, plus news, reviews, articles, and opinions from the worlds of wrestling, video games, football, and entertainment. Hello and welcome to another Football to the Max, as once again more news happening with Ezekiel Elliott, so we have to talk about that. I thought we might be done with nope. that for a little while longer, but apparently not. Uh, there is that Thursday Night Football game to break down, we'll do that in just a second. And of course there's uh, Dominique Rodgers Cromartie being suspended. There is Sammy Watkins being upset about not getting the ball. What's new? And, hey, we still haven't talked about the Adrian Peterson trade to the Cardinals. We'll we'll discuss that in our big NFL Week 6 preview. That is, of course, the same thing we do every Thursday. Talk about all the games. And then at the end, we'll do a little college pick em as well. I am your host, Sean Garman, here, Mr. Eric Watkins. Yeah, I thought this was supposed to be a relatively slow news day, but, um, yeah, that, that, that didn't happen. Yeah, most of this stuff coming out today, really. So, we'll, we'll have to see. The Lions got bad news. The Rams putting some ink on paper for Alec Ogletree. There's some few things to get into, but let's talk about this game here that just ended Thursday Night Football. The Philadelphia Eagles go and defeat the Carolina Panthers in Bank of America Stadium, 28-23. to Carson Wentz, three touchdowns, 16-30, to 222 yards. It wasn't easy at all for him. He was pressured the entire game. Two touchdowns to Zach Ertz, both off of turnovers by Cam Newton, and then the one Nelson Aguilar about 24 yards to get that final score. Then it was about the Eagles basically holding on. To me, this was about (coughs) which quarterback stood up to the pressure. And Carson Wentz did, and Cam Newton did not. Is that... Sum it up for you too, or you you see this a different way? Ah, uh, I see this as really the Panthers not doing Cam Newton any favors. Yes, you can argue the Luke Kuechly concussion that was a pretty big game changer, but third concussion the- in three years. Yeah, that and that's definitely something to look at for his long-term health. And even aside from that, just for this game, while there were some big catches from Carolina receivers, also a lot of drops. And at the same time, the running game, terrible. At one point, Jonathan Stewart had seven carries for minus six yards. You just... You can't have that much of a deficiency and expect to win a game. You can't. No, you really can't. Uh, and, it, and especially for Cam Newton, he was the one that ha- was having to rush. 
I mean, I, I think they also waited too long to start giving it to McCaffrey in the backfield. They should have been doing that from the beginning. They, they tried too hard to run Stewart. When it wasn't going in that first half, just go to McCaffrey after that. You're, you're, you're just running Stewart. You know he's going to get tackled behind the line. I can't tell you how many times he got tackled behind the line for like five or six yard losses. They mm-hmm. were just running through that line. And getting him, and then the problem is too. Cam Newton was having to. I mean, both credit to both defensive lines because they did a great job. The problem is, Cam Newton was having to run for his life the entire game, or if not, he was getting hit while throwing in the pocket. The uh, two of the interceptions, not the last one. The last one was a uh, just a misread, apparently, but. I still think that's on Cam to know just not to throw that ball in that spot. But the the first two, especially the first one, it gets tipped in the air because he's being mm-hmm. pressured interception. The second one as well, it, it happens. And, and that's the two, two of the scores came from getting turnovers inside the, the Carolina 20. For the Eagles, those were the two touchdowns to Zach Ertz. But for me, it, what I kept seeing is that the Eagles aren't sending blitz. The, the The Panthers had to send blitzes to get to Carson Wentz, and this is without Lane Johnson. Mm-hmm. And that's how the Julius Peppers uh, fumble happened is because – and there, there was a crazy stat that the Eagles had last year of because Lane Johnson had that suspension – of when he didn't play, their record was awful. And when mm-hmm. he played, the record they have is, is so much different. So I, I think that it, it's uh, th- that's what that happened there. Is their right tackle is obviously not your, your starting right tackle, so that's different. But the Eagles are just rushing four the whole time, and they're getting to the quarterback. Fletcher Cox was a beast in this game. And the the Panthers offensive line had no answer. They had to start using Samuel and tight ends to to chip guys, the the wide nine guys, because you know because they're they're coming in and they don't have a way to get them. And it's just it was amazing to me that they could not find a way to at least stop it or 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 put extra people on there put extra protection for cam he was having to change the play just to to do that for himself and then the times he did have good protection it was either a drop mm-hmm. or newton would overthrow the guy and yeah and i mean that's from having it as you said perfectly no pocket almost whatsoever and Let's face it, in situations like that, you miss Greg Olson. Because for everybody that gives him credit as such a great pass catcher, he will be a guy that will go in and slobber knock and really make defenses rethink their front four, front seven, in their blocking assignments. Now, that also said... They also lined up McCaffrey in the backfield a lot without giving him the ball. Mm -hmm. If you know that you have your athletic quarterback running and scrambling around and doing something, why not put in a couple of those for McCaffrey? If you're not even handing off, use him as a much better decoy rather than just having him just do nothing in the backfield the entire night. Well, a lot of times they had to just use him back there to block and he'd miss a block. Yeah, because he's not a big blocking back. If you're going to have anybody block, it would have made more sense with just with sheer size to have Stewart block and McCaffrey get the run. Yeah, uh, I think... It, it, you're you're right about that, but it's just they're having him back there. If you're back and they needed him back there, just because they, I, I think the they they wanted that decoy. They wanted people to think that they could give it to him. They were using him on the read option, 
after a while. I think they took too long to start the read option too. They did. Uh, because that, that was starting to get something for Cam. But, uh, I mean, credit to him. He makes that incredible, like, jump over the pylon that wasn't counted as a touchdown. They reviewed it and everything, and they just didn't have enough to overturn. But they, they get the touchdown to McCaffrey right after that. Uh, Cam Newton had two drives in the last five minutes. They The Panthers' defense stopped the Eagles on on two consecutive drives to give Cam time. And two times he fails. And on that on that third and one, this is what I don't get. You have a minute and something, right? Mm-hmm. Get the first down. Absolutely. What do you? Wh- why is it that like this with is, something this, like that, especially when you have two cracks at it? Yeah, you've you've already had a crack at it. You know this is your last opportunity. Romo was right. Get up to the line, freaking run the ball, get the yard and go. What are you doing taking forever to call the play, get back on the shotgun? Like, just get up to the line, even QB sneak if you have to. You got to get that first down because you need those set of downs. Then you can get up and spike and at least you got three tries to, to get mm-hmm. the 10 yards. I mean, that doesn't make any sense. Uh, just... The, the Panthers' inability to run the ball was, is a problem because Cam Newton can't throw it 50, 52 times. That's just no, – can't do that. No. And as much as the Panthers did at times stop the run, there was many runs by LeGarrette Blunt where he got a first down. You know, Barner would get a chunk of yards. Uh, just Nelson Aguilar was, was important here uh, as well. Just uh, the Panthers are really lucky to have even been had those opportunities at the end uh, because, you know, it, it just I, I don't think that you can really give the Panthers defense too much crap. They did what they were supposed to do, you know, and 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 that offense just couldn't get. Anything going? The Eagles' defense was absolutely dynamite the whole the whole night, pretty much. And uh, yeah, I mean, five and one, well deserved to go on a Thursday night without Lane Johnson. And I, I, look, I know that it changes the entire game, and I think we haven't said this enough. Losing Luke Keekley is a big deal. Mm-hmm. Okay, it's an absolute big deal. But you had two opportunities in the fourth quarter within five minutes left. Two different opportunities, and you don't get it on either one. That is, uh, that, that's on Cam Newton. That's on the offense. And, uh, you know, give credit to the Eagles defense again for, for just doing their playing their game, rushing guys, and... And being a being a problem, so yeah, I mean, I don't, I'm right, right? I mean, yeah, this, this not, has got to be on on the Panthers offense because the Panthers defense did everything they're supposed to do. And even with that very last pass to McCaffrey and fourth down where it fell just short, that ball is just a little bit better. That ball goes maybe six inches to a foot further. It's an easier catch, and that last drive is still going. But no, granted, it was a bit of a tough throw. I still think they could have ran on that play, got the one yard, get up and spike it and go. Mm-hmm. I just, but you know, I, I think again, credit to the Eagles' defense because they were pressuring Cam the entire night, and that was another case on that fourth and one, just pressuring him, just getting in, getting it in, just. I I just want to, like, I thought this might be the game where, and a lot of talk about the Eagles haven't played anybody, but they've been getting wins. This was a big test game, and they got this game. You know, I I think the rest of the NFC East needs to be careful because the Eagles might just run away with this thing. Especially the fact that, what, four of their first six are on the road? Yeah. They've got three straight games at home. Off of a mini buy to start that homestand. 
if the Eagles can get to at least seven and two, the division's just about done. Yeah, this is going to be a interesting set of, you know, Washington with the way 49ers have played, where I think three of their last four have been very close. Uh, you know, I don't think that that's just a cakewalk for Washington to deal with. You know, the Giants are already 0-5. They could very well be 0-6 with their having no receivers and going against that Broncos defense on Sunday Night Football. Uh, so, you know, it, the, the, I mean, Cowboys could already be looking at being in a hole in this bye week, and we're about to talk about it right now. Just want to end it on this. Again, the Eagles totally deserve this game. Their defense went out and absolutely were monsters. Uh, in the secondary, they were on top of these receivers most of the night. Even then, Cam Newton did a lot running. He tried to find Funches. He tried to find Benjamin. But it's like they were going too much to that deep pass. And it wasn't working for him. Or, they'd, or the guy would drop it. And just on that one of those last drives, you did two deep passes in a row. It's like. At that point, just drive down the field, too. Like, Mm -hmm. what you need to do is make sure you don't give Carson Wentz the ball back as well. I mean, you don't want to just try to go for the go for it all thing, and then you give Carson Wentz a lot of time. And, you know, just the way the Panthers' defense had been playing, they were tired by that point. I mean, they, they were just, they were doing well to get him off on third downs, the best third down team in the league. But, yeah, just. Just wanted to close by saying that this is a, I think this is a, a big game for the Eagles to win. Panthers' second loss in the season. NFC South now much more wide open. It, it, indeed. Uh, this is basically a lot easier now for Tampa Bay. A lot easier. Yeah, much easier for them. But, I mean, the way they've been playing, you never know. It could be open even more to the, the Saints, and and the Falcons certainly are still around the defending winners. So nothing is said and done right now for that, that division. Hmm, mm, mm, mm. I Well, go ahead. No, I was just going to say, for Panthers fans, bookmark this one. For the rest of the season. Bookmark it. Well, speaking of bookmark moments, this could be one here. As Ezekiel Elliott and the Dallas Cowboys received received news that I think was inevitable. With the precedent that was already set last year with Tom Brady. However, this is not the ruling that the NFL wanted. or Well, they did want this ruling. But it's not the definitive ruling that they wanted Ezekiel Elliott's uh, suspension has been reinstated after the federal court ruled 2 to 1 in favor of the NFL saying that the NFLPA went for an appeal too early before the decision on the the NFL's appeal had been made and so they got that but they did not get the one they wanted which is saying that the NFL has ultimate jurisdiction and that they cannot pursue this case. So the NFLPA or Ezekiel Elliott's lawyers can go and re-put in the the case, or they could just go to that same court of appeals that said no and just say, okay, we're going to, we're going to retool this in making it about the appeal process that it wasn't a fair appeal process. And we're going to go that route and try to get an injunction there. And because this is the bye week, they could go for an emergency ruling and get it before the Cowboys are set to play the 49ers. Uh, so uh, they, they could get this done before that week. And even then, you gotta ex- you got to say, if there's a game where you'd think Zeke is safe enough to miss, it would be against the 49ers. So it's it's a good thing if it happens. However, the, there's a chance that they may just rule in favor of the NFL this way too, and then he has to serve the suspension. So 
lots of things could happen here. It's not over. Mm-mm. But this certainly it, it, doesn't help things. No, and I think when you go back to the ruling of the original decision, the appeal process was unfair for a variety of reasons. And with the league meetings coming up, I think the NFLPA would be smart to really hang their hat on that because while it's no guarantee, they could get a much more favorable decision. They have two or three very solid options here at the very least to stall and further this maybe definitively towards the end of the season, pushing the suspension back to 2018. See what happens there. And, I don't think the NFL wants to go through that again. No, I don't think they do either. Uh, I think they'd much rather hope that the NFLPA just says no, but I, I just can't see them denying Elliot the chance to just no. go for this and see what happens, right? Yeah. I mean, the worst that can happen is that they will go ahead and just appeal in favor of the NFL, and you're back to what you're at right now. Right. So I just don't see why you don't go ahead and do it. No, and given the NFLPA, with everything that's going on and the new policies and all these positions from owners, the NFLPA finally has a measure of leverage, which they have not had in a long time, even dating back to in the negotiations for this latest CDA. And I really think that is since this since this has been such a rarity for the players association, they're going to use it to their utmost. Oh yeah. Uh, there th- th- I mean the precedent's already there for the NFL to win this case. Mm-hmm. Right? The only way the NFL may not win and, and basically, this this is what the e, Elliot is doing now. He's basically going for the appeal. They didn't do a great job in in, in giving him a, a, a an appeal that was fair, right? So they're going for mm-hmm. the whole. Don't even we don't even get any kind of suspension. Knock this out because they didn't give me a fair appeal process. If that doesn't work. Then, you know, what what do you do about if you're the, the Cowboys or Zeke Elliott at that point? You just have to take the suspension. But the NFL has precedent. If it wasn't for the fact that they did some shady stuff in the appeal, they'd have no recourse at this point. None. None. So really, it's a case of the NFL potentially hanging themselves. Right. But I think it's important. It's also important for the NFLPA, right? It's not just about Ezekiel Elliott. It's about everybody in the future now. If you don't pursue this, this is your one shot to get something done about the NFL to make sure that when these guys get a, an appeal, that it's always fair. Yeah, granted, most most things like the Danny Trevathan, we already saw he got it dropped to one game. You know, mm-hmm. most of the time, the appeals go in the favor of the player where they drop games but there's going to be other cases like Zeke's and you want to already have that in play where you're saying okay you got to make sure that you're fair you got to make sure that all the evidence is put in you know all that so I just I just can't see a way where the NFLPA doesn't take this opportunity and go okay let's just do this Mm -hmm. if they say no then they say no yeah they're absolutely going to and I think this could end up better for the players association than they think and again leverage 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 and if you really are thinking ahead with all of this going on towards that next collective bargaining agreement in four years time you start now start now yep go ahead start Right now, 
Uh, so, I mean, that's what it, that's like for Zeke. Might as well. I mean, we don't really have to talk about the Cowboys outside of that because they are on a bye week along with four other teams that are also on bye this week, which I don't know why I don't have that in front of me at the moment. But it's, uh, yeah, it's the Bills. So, you know, a, a person that's been on this podcast before uh, is... You know, their team's not playing this week. The Seahawks and the Bengals uh, joined the Cowboys in having a bye week in week six. But, you know, we already talked about the, the one game that's already happened. We need to talk about the rest of the games that are happening in week six. And one of them that's sort of important, one to keep your eye on, is the Minnesota Vikings, who... Looks like Sam Bradford is going to be out again. Case Keenum nope. coming in, and he's going to be at home playing quarterback against Aaron Rodgers. No, uh, a very tall task there. But already talk about Teddy Bridgewater perhaps around week eight could be ready to go. Uh-huh. Oh, so I had to watch out for this at the beginning of the season and thought, what were the Vikings doing? Well, who, well, who, who would have thought that Case Keenum would be out playing Sam Bradford right now? I mean, uh, <laughs> just, just, where, where do I begin with that one? So, oh, boy, what, what I'm trying to get at here is Case Keenum. You continue to play well. You might keep Teddy Bridgewater sitting on the sideline. If you don't play well in these next two games. Might start seeing the old quarterback come back. Now, let's be fair, and Teddy Bridgewater wasn't some great passer when he did play. But the Vikings offensive line's in much better shape now than it was during the time where uh, Bridgewater was playing. And the Vikings D has had a couple of more years to gel and, and get cohesive as a team. If the Vikings can make this a defensive battle... I think they have a chance, but even in Minnesota, it's just really hard for me to count out Aaron Rodgers right now. He is on a roll. Aaron Jones, I think, winds up passing Ty Montgomery even when he's healthy to be the running back because, honestly, you want a natural running back as your running back, not a guy that's a hybrid most of the time. Ty Montgomery is another Tavon Austin, uh, really. He should be out there catching passes. And I think, honestly... It's just hard for me to see the Packers go in and, and lose this game right now. It's the same here, and I will boil it down to Aaron Rodgers. Something about him, something about teams within his division that he just owns them. And I think this is going to be the case again. He's got still has a lot of weapons, still has that arm. It, it's hard of it against him right now. If you're the Vikings, do use Latavius Murray and McKinnon to your strength because the Packers have been showing you can run on them. Absolutely. And I'm going to tell you right now, I would lean more towards McKinnon. I would give him a couple of extra carries over Latavius Murray in this case. I totally agree uh, on that one. So... The Miami Dolphins have to go into Mercedes-Benz with Atlanta being a 12-and-a-half-point favorite oh, uh, God. for this game. Jarvis Landry coming out and pulling a Terrell Owens and saying, that's my quarterback. Don't be yelling for Matt Moore if you're the fans. In fact, this is what he says. For people to not understand what's really going on or not even touch the field before and to say we want somebody else to be playing and don't understand the situation or know what's going on. They just want to be on Twitter or just want to start a damn chant. And it's embarrassing as a player to have fans like that. It's embarrassing. He's our quarterback. We stand by him regardless. And then Adam Gase poured more fuel onto that fire by saying... They chanted for more last year, too. I'll make the decision on the quarterback. We're not going to take public polls. Ouch, Miami fans. 
Watch Damn. what happens when they quit showing up the games. Just ouch. Just take it. shots being taken at you everywhere. Yeah, I get that that's embarrassing and you don't want to hear that. But, I mean, it's not like Jay Cutler's been lighting the world on fire here. And this is another game where he could look really bad. He could look not just bad, he could look stupid. Flat out stupid. And, and, and I'm telling you this again. Fans, they could just not show up. It's Miami. You got other things that you can do on a Sunday afternoon. If they're really calling you out and treating you like this, fine. You let them know what time of day it really is. And uh, Jarvis Landry, be very, very careful because, and as you said, Sean, T.O. said the exact same thing. Look what eventually happened. If the Giants wouldn't even take his calls earlier this week. So, I can't believe he's still trying to think he could play in the NFL right now, but... Well, I mean, he, why not? Look, I mean, he's just sitting there with his popcorn, everything good to go. He said himself, I love me some me. <laughs> well, don't love you some you too much. Uh, this is going to have to be the Miami Dolphins defense getting in on the Falcons. We have seen that Matt Ryan throw some interceptions this year, uh, quite a few, but I'd still bank on on Atlanta winning this game at home. Just, I think they got too much uh, for the Dolphins right there. The Lions are hoping to continue with their spotless away record and go into the Superdome to play the Saints where, you know, historically the Saints have played well, even though they have not. They've only played one game there this season and they didn't win. This could certainly be a shootout. You'd imagine with the Saints and Lions. Lions have the much better defense. Wouldn't be surprised if a turnover and subsequent score wins the game. I have to go with the Lions on this one. Same here. I don't trust that Saints defense. And in a shootout, when you're looking at those last one, two big possessions in the fourth quarter... I trust Matt Stafford more. I agree. Uh, I would say now that the whole running back situation is figured out, where Alvin Kamara will probably be more of the scat back, and you have Mark Ingram being more of the running back with no Adrian Peterson there to harp on the sidelines, maybe they figure out something more balanced. But I'd still say with the Lions, even though they're going to be missing Hello Dinata for eight weeks, he has an elbow Ooh. problem. And just got put on the boomerang injured reserve. So that's an issue. Uh, Big time Mm -hmm. issue for the Lions there up front. But I'd still say with that secondary, they're bound to create some issues for Drew Brees and company. The New England Patriots going in to the place where the Jets are undefeated this season. 2-0 to MetLife Stadium. I know some people are have been bold enough to call this game for the Jets. New England nine-point favorites. Jets do play the Patriots well, regardless of the situation. I wouldn't be surprised if this is close. We know Josh McCown, when he gets into games where he has to throw the ball, he'll do it. Uh, I just can't, though. I just can't, I just can't do it. I'm going to say the Patriots win. Tom I'll Brady going to do it. I'll even lay the points on that one. I would. I hope no. not. I'd like to see it be close. No, I wouldn't. Trust me on that one. Can you imagine Imagine the Jets being 4-2 and two and being the leaders in that division Sean, after you- this week? Do you want me to get repeated phone calls? Do you want my life to be miserable? Things are going good. Things are peaceful. They're going to call Patriots fans, not Dolphins fans. Oh, you don't know New Yorkers. Trust me. 
Trust me. I'm just saying. Everybody in the AFC East is going to hear about it. Patriots fans, Dolphins fans, Bills fans. I just no. I, I'm look. I'm low on rations. Okay. I've only got two drinks and one edible. I'm trying to save those. <laughs> I don't blame you, but this it would be incredible if that happened. I just I know Brady showed even with the limited. Uh, receiving core, they still competed and got the win on Thursday. I, I just, it's hard for me. It, I will say, watch out that that corner tandem, May and Adams have been tremendous this year for the Jets. Brady better watch it on you know where he throws the ball. Uh, he does have that shoulder problem. Yeah, does, does that come into play at all? Yeah, he's had that shoulder problem for how long now? And there's always even been a hint of gamesmanship of Brady showing up on the injury reports or all that. that. No. Come on, Belichick knows better. Redskins are 11-point favorites to defeat the 49ers at FedEx Field. I, I, you know, Redskins are coming off a bye. They've had plenty of time to game plan for San Francisco. That defense doesn't really scare you, but they do have a bit of a pass rush. I, and, and the Redskins defense last time we saw them, they were terrorizing folks. Oh, I don't know. They were I making mean- Oakland look bad. Yeah, they were making Oakland look bad, but can they really now do that twice? I, I just, I, I mean, don't. making Brian Hoyer look bad isn't you know difficult or anything. No, and I don't trust the Redskins still for some reason. I mean, against the spread, yeah, nine is a bit of a or eleven rather is a bit of a big number. A little bit too big for me to be comfortable, but just, no. This game is going to be a lot closer than it should be. I think it's going to be a lot closer than it should be, and I'm going to say it. I'm calling the upset. 49ers are going to upset the Washington Redskins and bring them back from a bye in bad fashion. Yeah, you're on your own on that one. All right, fair enough. I'm going to call another upset here. I know it's a way. I know it's uh, difficult. The Mitchell Trubisky's second start. But I thought he showed some good things. He showed some bad things. Obviously, the interception was, was not something you want. It cost your team the game. Uh, it's. I still think it's a problem with not having receivers more than anything. And then they were able to kind of really – hamper in the the running backs the Ravens certainly could do that but it's been such a weird year for these Ravens I mean their defense has looked amazing some games and they look so bad other games Uh, yeah and Joe Flacco same thing some games he looks really good some he doesn't I know the six and a half favorites seems pretty fair for Baltimore at home I think the Bears pull it off though they that defense looked Really impressive uh, last week. I know you're sacking Sam Bradford for the most part in that first half, but they got at least one sack on Keenum, and they were they were being a force. So remember, Ravens had some injuries in the offensive line. I'm going to go with the Bears on this one. I am again going to disagree. I think the Ravens, they know what the Steelers are doing now. They're kind of counting down until they get a little bit of a range for that one, trying to salvage themselves because they know they're still in a bit of a dogfight for that division. And I don't think the Bears have gotten to the point where they can advance what they've done with Trubisky past the preseason. Not quite yet. Ravens take this one. Texas made some signings on the defensive end to try to replace Whitney Merciless and J.J. Watt, two guys that are irreplaceable for that defense. But even then, this is the Deshaun Watson 
showcasing to the Browns why they should have taken him instead of Deshaun Kaiser game. It's in Houston. Uh, I wouldn't be surprised if Lamar Miller runs all over and Foreman run all over the Browns. Watson, you know, throws a few touchdowns to Will Fuller or, or DeAndre Hopkins. I don't think this is even close. I mean, I think Kevin Hogan has a better shot at keeping it close. But uh, even then, the Texans, they're not losing at home here. Oh, yeah. With this, with Cleveland, now that you've got another messy quarterback situation, now that you're going to Kevin Hogan, who's shown a little bit more promise, the Browns just seem a little bit too unlucky and deflated. I got to go with Houston on this one. Yeah, it's just difficult for me to say that, you know, the Browns, this would be a game the Browns have a shot at winning. It's just, there's too much riding against them, honestly, in this situation. The moving on from here is now getting into the four o'clock games. The Arizona Cardinals make an interesting move. Bring in Adrian Peterson. They release Chris Johnson. Buccaneers have a pretty good front. CJ 2K uh, should have shut up. Yeah, CJ 2K should have shut up. But I think he was always he was always going to get dropped. He was always going to get released the moment that they uh, went and got Peterson. Uh, Peterson said he never forced his way out, but he's not going to lie that he didn't want to change the scenery. He thinks he can still play five more years. No. Going to have to prove it a lot here at home against the Bucks. But certainly, the Cardinals could use a running game. They have missed that dearly. They've had to put so much pressure on Carson Palmer and Larry Fitzgerald and the other guys. If Peterson can play anything like the Peterson, you know, of a few years ago, then the Cardinals might have something. I, that offensive line has problems. Yeah, I just, but, but the Buccaneers also have a lot of things figured out. And bonus, they may have fixed their kicking problem, finally. You say that. Could be. You <laughs> say that, but we don't know. He is seeing a medium right now, a psychic, to try to get things better. This is sad when you're having to see a psychic, but uh, Why are whatever you helps you. Why are you seeing a psychic? Tampa Bay is only a couple of hours from Casadega. You go there, see the people you need to, get in touch with yourself in the big cornfield, everything's good to go. Right <sighs> off of I-4, exit 116. I think the Bucks hold Peterson in check, and Tampa Bay gets back to their winning ways here. As do I. The big 405 game, though. Who would have thought this? Three and two Los Angeles Rams against the three and two Jacksonville Jaguars, but it's in Everbank Field, Eric. And Jaguars don't win there. No, they don't, and they're still not going to. Even though Jacksonville is favored by two and a half, but still. It Yeah, they're favored by two and a half, and home field advantage is worth three. What does that tell you? Yeah. Oh, well, we already know that Everbank Field is not the the home field advantage for Jacksonville, but the Rams looking to get back off the side. They're they're 2-0 away from the Coliseum this year. I feel like that Jaguars defense, though, they're no joke. Neither is the Rams. This could be one of those, like, 10-9 10-9 to 9 games or something, especially Blake Bortles has got to get out there and throw. You got oh, Gurley, the, the, the matchup of Gurley versus Fournette. This is going to be so much fun to watch, I hope. Uh, no, but, no, it isn't. No, it's not? Why? Oh, it's not because this is still Blake Bortles. Now, granted, it's going to be a nice, cool day. We're finally going to break or uh, stop threatening 90-degree days, 
as we normally do this time of year. It's going to be in the 80s, so if you're anywhere near downtown, go to some of the establishments. Hourglass, 1904. There are plenty of great places. The Tavern Over Pie uh, Veterans Memorial Arena. Best places to go watch the game. Bay Street Bar and Grill. Plenty of options. Okay, okay, stop. Just stop. <laughs> I, we're giving them free publicity here. And we're getting hey, nothing I have out of it. What, the of a couple of those places. See, okay. see, you should talk to them about sponsoring, sponsoring the show. But uh, that's for another day. You did give them, you know, just, we might as well just call this, you know, football to the max at Jacksonville. Go visit Jacksonville portion of the show. Hmm. Nothing wrong with that, by the way. Just no. Like, it's where Florida begins. Come on now. Uh, you're not wrong. Uh, so, <laughs> that I mean, is our Miami thing. is at the end of Florida, so <laughs> I'm just... <laughs> but, uh, no, that, yeah. that became our official slogan, and it just kind of caught on, so it's like, eh, whatever. <laughs> yeah, I mean, who wants to go to... Who, other than... Unless you're a racing fan, like, why are you going to Pensacola for? So, uh, so I mean, Leonard, you know... For all things considered, the Rams have shown you can run on them, and Leonard Fournette has been amazing this season. Not that Gurley hasn't, but I'm going to vote for Jacksonville here. Nope. Getting that win at Everbank. No, no, no. That's all on you. I am taking the smart pick, and I'm going with the Rams. All right. All right. Fair enough. The game I think a lot of people are going to be watching for because Big Ben is looking to rebound after last week's five interception performance. And he. Oh, I forgot to mention that Alec Ogletree got a very much deserved uh, 42 million with 30 million guaranteed four year contract extension. This is the linebacker for the Rams. Uh, who also can can rush the passer as well. And you have any idea how far even, like, one game check could go if you're celebrating down here in Jacksonville? Please. I wouldn't be surprised if he go lights up Blake Bortles and then you see him in certain establishments around town. By the way of which, if you're listening, tweet me at Squid Sports Head and I can give you some recommendations. Do you think Sammy Watkins has a right to be frustrated because he doesn't have a big role with the Rams? No. Catch, uh, be more effective, be better in practice, and catch more passes. Sorry. I feel like he doesn't need to be because the team is still 3-2. and two. Yeah. He had a damn good game against the Cowboys. I mean, he's been efficient when he needs to be. Just, yeah, you're not getting the ball all the time. I know that's frustrating for receivers, but he's spreading the ball around and he's trying to get everybody involved. So, Exactly. Just sit back and enjoy the ride. Certainly, and I was mentioning Big Ben. He says that I don't question myself. Uh, no offense, no offense to any of you guys, the media, but it doesn't matter to me how you guys question me or not, or quote unquote professional talking heads. Uh, you know, he then talks about how he doesn't even remember his own stats, but I've been playing this game longer than you've probably been covering it. Well, he is obviously feeling much better after that. He, he, you know. Do you think that was a one-week wonder? Yes. And he performs much better against the Chiefs, though, in Arrowhead. Yeah, performs better. Loses, but performs better. I Yeah, I'd say they still lose. Uh, the Steelers' defense is pretty good, but you still got to go against Marcus Peters. You can maybe catch one on Mitchell if you're Antonio Brown or Martavis Bryant. You could say the Chiefs are due, and this is a tough game. But I, I just can't. The the way Alex Smith has been playing has been in, in, incredible. Uh, Kareem Hunt as well. You know, looks like Travis Kelsey is going to be okay. He practiced. 
yeah, I, I've still got to go with the Chiefs here. So do I. The Los Angeles Chargers going against the Oakland Raiders. Uh, I think Derek Carr is trying to play, but... No, he shouldn't. If you're the Raiders, I mean... I feel like you might want to keep him out. Keep him out until at least the Thursday game where you're going to need him more and you have those extra few days to see what is up with your back. But even with EJ Manuel, the Oakland soon-to-be Las Vegas Raiders can easily take this over the Los Angeles Probably should hopefully be soon back to San Diego Chargers in this one. Well, looks like reports are that Derek Carr remains on track to start. Ah, uh, Chargers. Bad idea. Bad However, idea. However, the air in Oakland might be a problem because of the wildfires. Uh, the air quality is poor. They've had to cut practice short for two days now because of that. So. Yeah, you know, they're monitoring at, that situation as to whether it's going to get played in Oakland or not. Yeah, as of right now, it will still be played as scheduled, and also both Stanford and Cal set to host games. Their games could be affected too, so uh, keep an eye on this one. And if you're in Northern California around those wildfires, they tell you to evacuate, go leave. There's already been another saddening loss of life. Do not make this any worse. He is uh, totally right on that one. Please do uh, exactly uh, what he just said. If Derek Carr plays, the Amari Cooper situation is just absolutely frightening at this point. Like, how do you just go incognito like this? Like, it's just, I don't understand. But uh, Marshawn Lynch hasn't been himself either. I mean, that that door is open for the Chargers to come take this game. Ah, but this is still the Chargers we're talking about. I don't know. I think this is going to be another nail-biting close one, but I think the bad luck for the Bolts returns. We'll see. I'm going to go with the Chargers here. Denver on Sunday Night Football. I'm sure they're wishing they could have flexed this or something. 11.5 point <laughs> favorites against an 0-5 Giants team that is missing Odo Beckham Jr., Dwayne Harris, Brandon Marshall, Sterling Shepard is probably going to be out at least this game. So you got Evan Ingram, Greg Lewis Jr., Travis Rudolph. I mean, still good receivers, by the way. And... Uh, company, probably going to have to use some running backs as well to go out there and catch balls. Uh, to go against this Broncos defense with the with the, a keep to lead, Chris Harris, I think that's too much for this Giants receiving court. This is where they're going to really miss Beckham. Uh, the Broncos have been stifling against the run, not that the Giants really have a run game. Uh, the Now, listen, the Giants defense is still the Giants defense, even though they are without Dom- Dominique Rodgers Cromartie because he's been suspended indefinitely by the team. Now, those can only last one to four weeks, but still. What do you think, Eric? I mean, I'd still say it's, this is a really hard one for the Giants. Lay the points. Watch something else Sunday night. Giants to 0 and 6. Yeah, this is not the game you want uh, to be trying to win and, and avoid that 0-6. But Pray there's a good baseball game on. Broncos should win this. And then Monday Night Football, even though Marcus Mariota is set on track to come back, it's the Colts and Titans, both 2-3. and three. Whew. In Nissan Stadium in Nashville, uh, DeMarco Murray... Going to try to get back on track as well. Jacoby Brissett's been surprising people. And you know what? I think they're going to come spoil the party. I think the Colts win this one. Uh, The defense is playing well enough. The Titans defense isn't anything to write home about. Brissett could, you know, run around and get something going with T.Y. Hilton. And, uh, you know, 
how do we know Mario is going to be right back into it when he, you know, coming back from the injury? Yeah, I wonder if the Predators are going to be playing that night because that, whoever they play, it would be a much more interesting game than this one's going to be. What do you got? Ah, uh, Titans 13-10. And, okay. and, and, of course, it's Monday, so I can't really drink. So, yeah, I'm going to be looking for more baseball and or hockey on that night as well. I can't say that I blame you at all for that, honestly. Uh, that's I, I would probably be trying to do that too if I didn't have to uh, be taking notes and watching this game. But yeah, let's get on to the college pick. Em. Some interesting games. Uh, I mean, we've certainly had better weeks, but still some interesting uh, games here. Uh, you have the Texas Tech Red Raiders, who are ranked for the first time this season, going against West Virginia. You know what? I think West Virginia is going to come in for the upset. Ditto. And Red Raiders are going to go back to not being ranked again. <laughs> so, uh, TCU, Texas has beaten Kansas State. Uh, they made... I thought Texas did a pretty damn good job of beating Kansas State last week. I just can't see it. TCU's going to win. Easily. I mean, it, they've already spoiled Bedlam for the Big 12. Now it's on them to keep it up. Well, Texas could spoil Oklahoma's party some more in the Red River rivalry. 3.30. Oh, boy. I, you know okay. what? I'm going to say Texas with the upset. First of all, I don't know. I know why everybody changed it to the Red River Red River rivalry, but for the sake of my tongue and because I don't feel like it, that game is always going to be the Red River shootout, and Oklahoma is going to be way too pissed off to lose. That's a fair statement, but hey, we've seen Texas has hung tough with a lot of big teams this year. They could certainly do with Oklahoma. Yeah, hanging tough, but there again, Oklahoma will be too pissed off to lose. Navy taking on Memphis. These two teams can certainly score points. Uh, Navy still hasn't played anyone. Well, and they're they not barely going, beat the team the that. One. Yeah, but they barely beat. I forgot who they played last week. I did the damn blur, but I don't know why I can't remember now. But they played Air Force, and Air Force has been bad this year. They barely beat Air Force by three. I guess it is a battle the the military academy, so those are always going to be tough. The, but. Yep, the Commander-in-Chief trophy. Although, I mean, come on. I get this, but can at least one of those schools throw the Coast Guard a bone, play them once every couple of years? Does the Coast Guard they, have a football team? Yes, they do. Are the they Coast part of the Guard? NCAA? Yeah, Division Three. They're the Bears. Oh. They were very similar to Gators colors, actually. I'm going to say Memphis with the upset here. You know what? The midshipmen, they'll be walking in Memphis. They'll have their feet 10 feet off of Beal. But they're not going to feel the way I feel because they're going to lose. Nice reference there. I, I had to be sure to get it right for this episode. Ohio State going into Nebraska. Nebraska didn't look good against Wisconsin last week. I don't imagine that's going to be the same for Ohio State. Buckeyes go in and roll. The children of the corn have not been scary since they entered the Big Ten. You are not wrong. Eh, they've had a couple years ago, I feel like they were close. No, 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 no. Uh, yeah, Wisconsin always seems to get the better of them uh, in that side of the Big Ten. Utah had not played anyone until they played Stanford, and they got – they. it was uh, – some bad penalties kept Utah with a chance, but they didn't look very good at all against Stanford. 
Uh, I think USC is going to come in at home and roll them. Have you ever dealt with an angry Mormon? Uh, yes. My brother was Mormon. At one point, he got angry at me, so... Uh, uh, okay, but overall, it was pretty easy to handle, right? Yes. That's exactly what USC is going to do. You're not going to have those people riding their bikes with their black ties, knocking on your door at 7 in the morning. Sorry, it's... No. <laughs> UCLA, I think they handle Arizona. Uh, I've actually got Arizona maybe in a bit of an upset in this one. San Diego State. Undefeated. I think they beat Boise State. Boise State is not the team they used to be, and they've shown it this year. They don't do the Statue of Liberty. It ain't going to help them. Aztecs all the way. And they're playing this game at 11 o'clock. Yes. God, did they just want us to oh, like, yes. not be able to sleep, apparently? Stanford taking on Oregon. This should be a really fun game to watch. I feel like Stanford's going to start clicking back in the gear and get this one. So do I. And uh, that means that from my night of uh, hopeful debauchery, I'll be home just in time for kickoff. Miami and Georgia Tech. Do you really have to ask? Well, I mean, I didn't think you'd go against Miami, but, you know, Georgia Tech's not... They've been good this year. And? Just saying. No. I've, I've, no. seen, I've been seeing some people picking the upset. <laughs> oh, the hope of the mighty and the foolish. Miami, Miami. I'm going for Miami. LSU, I've been seeing a lot of people picking this upset, too. LSU and <laughs> Auburn. LSU. It's, in, it's in Death Valley. Oh, yeah. I'm sorry. Where did Troy go and win? They could be pretty angry about that, by the way. Yeah, you're pretty angry, yet you had to... Syracuse hung tough with you. Troy beat you. Do you really deserve to be angry? Auburn's going to come in and take Ed Ordron's job with them. Sorry. I would agree as well. Auburn. Wisconsin. And Purdue's been interesting this year. They, they beat uh, Minnesota. Uh, Wisconsin, I would say, gets the win, though. Again, they beat Minnesota. Sorry, your twins are out. I talked about Minnesota United repeatedly on soccer to the max. They're hanging their hopes on the wild, and I think also college hockey season is going to start up soon. Eh. Although, hey, to their credit, the Timberwolves have some sweet-looking New Jerseys. So there's that. That they do. Uh, Washington taking on an Arizona State team that they, they did beat Oregon. And? I'm just bringing that up for the sake of just the, so that it doesn't look like they... <sighs> Whatever. <laughs> uh, Washington should still win regardless. Yeah, this is why. I don't know why you bring that up, because, again, look at what Washington State just did to them. Washington's going to do even worse. Michigan State taking on Minnesota. It is at TCF Bank. Uh, really, Sean? Again, it really? Really? Hey, this is the time for Michigan State to make sure that they're not pretenders. So... And they will. I, I, I don't know where's any debate on this one. I'm just bringing that up. South Florida should beat Cincinnati. They've been awful. Cincinnati's been awful. I said. No, well, of course they have, and I think Cincinnati's going to, or USF rather, is going to tie the record for consecutive games with thirty plus points. They're also on a ten game win streak as well. Yeah, they could easily hang 50, because, I mean, come on. 
Uh, Miami, USF, it's on us to get to the New Year's Six now, representing the Sunshine State. So, <laughs> Speaking of hanging 50, Georgia's going to, if they don't hang 50 on Missouri, I'll be really surprised. Oh, please, that one's going to be at least 60. It's <laughs> God, at least 60. Gee. Yeah. Yeah. NC State and Pittsburgh. Pittsburgh has not been the team they were last year at all. Uh, NC State should win again. They should, they should, but don't be surprised if this is one of those out of nowhere crazy high scoring ACC games. Yeah, it is at Heinz Field, so you never know. Uh, Indiana taking on Michigan. In, in I- Bloomington. And Michigan. This would be a lot more appealing of a basketball matchup. In the oh, field. yes, certainly. But uh, uh, Arkansas is going to get whooped by Alabama. I'm already telling you that. I don't it, need uh, to. It, no, I mean, especially since Dabo Sweeney's going to be there uh, with all of his old guys celebrating the 92 national championship team, which I may only be slightly bitter about, but not really. How is he going to be there when Clemson... Oh, Clemson plays on Friday. That's right. Yeah, he even said he's glad the schedule worked out. Be there Friday, be there Saturday, win-win. Yeah, Clemson should beat Syracuse, even if it's in the Carrier Dome. Put all three quarterbacks, and they each throw at least two touchdown passes. Tigers hang up 70. whoop de doo Any chance Cal beats Washington State? Hell no. Unless they move the game, then, oh no. (laughs) Yeah, I'd still say Washington State wins as well. So I think that pretty much covers it here. So that's going to do it for us this week. Uh, I hope that uh, you enjoy your football for this weekend. If if you like what you heard, subscribe to Football to the Max. Uh, Wherever you like to listen to podcasts, you can subscribe to the whole WTM network to get Our thoughts on the U.S. men's national team failing to qualify for the World Cup. That was just a tragic moment that we're still having to feel today. We're going to feel for a long time coming. Five years we have to wait again. And there's even more news coming out in the world of FIFA. Not just the UEFA Nations League, but the the RB bribery on the Narcis. Oh, Lord, again. Again. And not surprising at all when it comes to soccer and bribery. But yes, uh, you can also listen to Eric's point of viewer. You can listen to all the Wrestling to the Max stuff, which is you know where the network gets its name. You can listen to video games, everything else. So, all right. Until we are here again on Monday night after the Monday Night Football game. Later, everybody. Peace. The following podcast is a W2M Network original production. Visit W2Mnet.com for all of our other great podcasts, plus news, reviews, articles, and opinions from the worlds of wrestling, video games, football, and entertainment.